Chapter Eleven of the Mysterious Stranger by Mark Twain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Patrick Seventy Nine. Chapter Eleven. For as much as a year, Satan continued these visits. But at last he came less often, and then for a long time he did not come at all. This always made me feel lonely and melancholy. I felt that he was losing interest in our tiny world, and might at any time abandon his visits entirely when one day he finally came to me i was overjoyed but only for a little while he had come to say good-bye he told me and for the last time he had investigations and undertakings in other corners of the universe, he said, that would keep him busy for a longer period than I could wait for his return. And you are going away, and will not come back any more? Yes, he said. We have comraded long together, and it has been pleasant. Oh, pleasant for both. But I must go now, and we shall not see each other any more. In this life, Satan, oh, but in another, we shall meet in another, surely. Then all tranquilly and soberly he made the strange answer, There is no other. A subtle influence blew upon my spirit from his, bringing with it a vague, dim, but blessed and hopeful feeling that the incredible words might be true, even must be true. Have you never suspected this, Theodore? No, but how could I? But if it can only be true, it is true a gust of thankfulness rose in my breast but a doubt checked it before it could issue in words and i said but but we have seen that future life seen it in its actuality and so it was a vision it had no existence I could hardly breathe for the great hope that was struggling in me, a, a vision, a, a, a vision. Life itself is only a vision, a dream. It was electrical. By God, I had had that very thought a thousand times in my musings. Nothing, Nothing exists. exists. All is All a dream. Is dream. God, man, the world, the sun, the moon, the wilderness of stars, a dream. All a dream. They have no existence. Nothing exists save empty space and you. I? And you are not you. You have no body, no blood, no bones. You are but a thought. I myself have no existence. I am but a dream. Your, your dream. dream. Creature of your imagination. In a moment you will have realized this, 
then you will banish me from your visions, and I shall dissolve into nothingness, out of which you made me. I am perishing already. I am failing. I am passing away. In a little while you will be alone in shoreless space to wander its limitless solitudes without friend or comrade forever. For you will remain a thought, the only existent thought, and by your nature inextinguishable, indestructible. But I, your poor servant, have revealed you to yourself and set you free. Dream other dreams, dreams and better. Strange that you should not have suspected years ago, centuries, ages, aeons ago. For you have existed companionless through all the eternities. Strange indeed that you should not have suspected that your universe and its contents were only dreams, visions, fiction. Strange because they are so frankly and hysterically insane, like all dreams. A God who could make good children as easily as bad, yet preferred to make bad ones. Who could have made every one of them happy, yet never made a single one happy. Who made them prize their bitter life, yet stingily cut it short. Who have made his angels eternal happiness unearned yet required his other children to earn it, who gave his angels painless lives, yet cursed his other children with biting miseries and maladies of mind and body, who mouths justice and invented hell, hell. mouths mercy and invented hell. 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 Mouth's golden rules and forgiveness multiplied by seventy times seven and invented hell. hell. Who mouths morals to other people and has none himself. Who frowns upon crimes yet commits them all. Who created man without invitation then tries to shuffle the responsibility for man's acts upon man, instead of honorably placing it where it belongs, upon himself. And finally, with altogether divine obtuseness, invites this poor, abused slave to worship him. You perceive now that these things are all impossible, except in a dream. You perceive that they are pure and puerile insanities, the silly creations of an imagination that is not conscious of its freaks. In a word, that they are a dream, and you the maker of it. The dream marks are all present. You should have recognized them earlier. It is true, that which I have revealed you, there is no God, no universe, no human race, no earthly life, no heaven, no hell. It is all a dream, a grotesque and foolish dream. Nothing exists but you, and you are but a thought, 
a vagrant thought, a useless thought, a homeless thought, wandering forlorn among the empty eternities. <laughs> He vanished, and he left me appalled, for I knew and realized that all he had said was true. The End of the Mysterious Stranger by Mark Twain